Howdy space fans, Jack here with another Starbase update for you. This week we'll be asking the million dollar question, which of course is, when the heck will Starship finally launch? In technical terms you might say, when orbit? And this is because we got a tweet from the man himself, Elon Musk, alluding to a launch date. SpaceX is continuing to finish up, at least as far as we can tell, pre-launch work on Ship 24, keeping up its breakneck pace over here at the orbital launch mount and on the ground site equipment at the launch site, and continuing to work on foundations for a new structure at the build site. All right, let's get you up to date on all things Starbase. Starting right here at the orbital launch site, SpaceX is continuing to busily install shielding and other equipment on the orbital launch mount. This is, of course, to protect it against the forces it will need to endure during launch. As a friendly reminder, according to Elon Musk, B-7's Raptor engines will fire at 90% thrust during liftoff. That's almost double the force the pad had to endure during the 31 engine static fire. As you can see here, only a couple shielding panels are missing still from the orbital launch mount. Don't mistake this for a missing panel though, as that's an access door. The pace here is quite busy. Loads of welders are going at it on various parts of the mount. Also, cranes and work platforms are scurrying around like busy ants. On top of all this, SpaceX is working on a new way to access the orbital launch mount as well. On the right side in this view, you can see a new staircase is visible, being constructed going up one of the legs of the launch mount. This could be just to ease congestion on the single stairway that currently exists. I imagine it can get quite annoying to shuffle along a single stair as large numbers of people go up and down them. Going back to the shielding for a moment, one of the additions to the orbital launch mount is not just the big chunky panels that we've seen being installed, but also the little pieces that go in between them to cover up any gaps. SpaceX needs to make sure there are no gaps in the shielding for the fury of 33 Raptor engines to sneak into and cause damage. Moving over now to the water deluge system that was recently delivered from Kennedy Space Center. I guess recently it was more like two months ago. The installation of it is still progressing. SpaceX is continuing to move dirt and lay pipes into place. It still remains a question though if SpaceX will be ready to use the water deluge system on the first launch. But it seems as the date keeps slipping, the likelihood that they will have enough time to complete the system and in fact use it increases with every passing day. With Booster 7 now removed from the orbital launch mount, workers have easier access to the central area to perform modifications, add additional hardware, or additional shielding. This is the most likely reason why Booster 7 was removed at all. It enables them to work faster and more efficiently on the final preparations to the mount itself. Here you can see how the gaps between the steel panels that they've installed are now closed and welded to not allow any possibility of raptor plume ingress. They're also reinforced with an extra steel bar on top of the panels which covers the gap as well. SpaceX is also installing these small steel boxes below the panels. Since these have small openings, they might be related to some sort of air venting inside the orbital launch mount. So inside of the steel box, there is still good air circulation for the workers. Or maybe those holes will get plugged at some point, and it's just some kind of structural reinforcement. Let us know what you think in the comments, because I certainly don't know. The orbital launch mount is not the only part of Stage Zero that's been getting work done on it, though, as the chopsticks have also received some love. Though, of course, it's nowhere near the scale of what's being done to the orbital launch mount. We don't exactly know what SpaceX is working on with the chopsticks, because it doesn't really seem like anything was broken or needed fixing. One potential indicator that we are truly getting close to launch might be the amount of scaffolding on the orbital launch mount and the chopsticks. SpaceX will have to remove that scaffolding ahead of any Starship flight or risk it going flying all willy-nilly when Starship lifts off the pad. Foreign object debris is generally not a good thing when it comes to rocket launches. All right, I've said the word launch the requisite number of times, so let's talk about the thing everybody wants to know the launch date. Thanks to a tweet from a certain Elon Musk this week, we have a bit of an updated timeline. In that tweet, Elon speaks about being ready to launch Starship in a few weeks, pending FAA license approval. Elon said that he hopes to have that approval from the FAA near the end of the third week of April, which of course brings the date to Elon's favorite day, 420. And with that, 
March is predictably, perhaps, out of the running. And though it may seem farcical to predict a Starship launch on 420, it is actually quite plausible. Even though launch has been about a month away for the last, oh, I don't know, year or so? This is extremely exciting because it's one of the first dates we have publicly heard that an orbital launch might happen. And it's just a few weeks away. So will Starship actually launch in April? I don't know, but I say it's plausible. But do I think it will launch in April? I'm going to guess May. Why? Because things always slip a bit and I don't think Starship will launch right on its first attempt. So to give time for things to slip and for multiple attempts before they finally pull it off, I'm gonna guess sometime in May. As a quick recap, SpaceX still needs to finish work on stage zero. They need to get approval from the FAA for launch, dodge any lawsuits that might occur as a result of that approval, and the vehicles themselves need to be ready. So to that end, let's check out Ship 24. It's currently stored at the production site in the rocket garden, most likely to make space because area at the production site is limited. One of the only items that is still missing with Ship 24, at least as far as we can see, is the thermal protection system tiles that cover the crane attach points. And SpaceX this week installed more of them. We can see the workers installing those tiles here. This view gives you a great perspective on how big and indeed thick these tiles are, as one worker places another tile on the ship. One thing that is slightly concerning about Ship 24's tiles is the well, for lack of a better term, lumpy distribution of them. I really wonder how this heat shield will hold up to the forces of re-entry. At the beginning of the week, SpaceX had almost finished the job with Ship 24, with the number of remaining tiles in the single digits. We'll talk more about the final tile work a little bit later in the video. Next up, and next door to the rocket garden, crews also worked on an extra high ship stand, which would allow for better Raptor vacuum engine access. The higher stand could potentially be the future standard for ships, as it makes engine installation easier, especially for the RVAC engines, which have a nozzle that's so much bigger than the sea level Raptors. It's really easy to imagine it being a pain in the butt to remove or install Raptors in a confined space. Let's move now a few hundred feet over at the production site to the location of the former scrapyard. This is where SpaceX is working on a new structure that could end up being a new mega bay. SpaceX continues to drill pilings for the new foundation, laying down the base of the next big structure to go up at Starbase. Maybe we'll see parts of the new mega bay arrive on site soon. Either way, holes are being drilled, rebar loaded inside them, and concrete poured, all in the name of giving a solid foundation to whatever structure is to go on top. I don't know if you can tell, but there is a lot going on this week. So now let's take the opportunity to jump over to the next spot we're gonna talk about, the Massey's test site. As a reminder, this is where SpaceX is going to conduct cryogenic and pressure proof testing of future vehicles and test articles to free up space at the launch site for launches. Of course, every time they have to do a proof test, they have to close off the entire launch site, which kills their ability to get work done on stage zero, and eventually could lead to a bottleneck with launching. At least in theory. Anyway, an SPMT was moved to Massey's in the middle of the week to remove hardware from that site, though so far we haven't seen anything move. One of the more notable things at Massey's right now is the NC31 test nose cone, which is in the nose cone jail for structural testing. As you can see here, Test flap attach point hardware has been installed in preparation for the nose cone getting tested. For sure though, the most prominent guest at Massey's right now is Ship 25, which could be there to perform structural testing or to help work out any bugs in the new cryo station. You can see it hooked up to the GSE in this shot. Moving back now to the launch site, just because Booster 7 was removed from the orbital launch mount, it doesn't mean there's been no work done on it. We can see here that one of Booster 7's HPU covers has been removed again. Why? We don't know! We also don't know what work, if any, is left to perform on Booster 7 ahead of launch. It seems like it's not a huge focus of attention right now, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that work is done. As always, we'll keep our eyes on Booster 7 and keep you all updated on any developments. Moving back to the production site, at the high bay, we have Ship 26 on the left, Ship 27 on the right, and Ship 28 in the center. These bays can sometimes seem deceivingly small on camera, but they have enough space in the smaller high bay to work on three ships at once. Staying at the production site, we see multiple rings which might be related to Booster 11. Booster 9 is fully stacked already, and you can see the top section of Booster 10 standing in front of the mid bay, waiting its final stacking on the bottom half. Update. As I was driving into Starbase today to shoot this video, I noticed the Booster 10's forward section has indeed been finally moved inside the Mega Bay. So, stacking of Booster 10 appears to be imminent. We also got a glimpse at this really interesting quint, or five ring barrel. It says Ship 32 
Aft stiffened barrel. Scrapped for pucker, not for flight. That's not something I've seen before. Neat! Moving back over to the rocket garden, the final thermal protection system tiles for Ship 24 were installed at the end of the week. This now means that Ship 24, from what we can tell anyways, is fully assembled and might be ready for stacking in flight. I cannot wait to see it roll back to the launch site. Double update. While editing this video, the shielding around the orbital launch mount was completed. It's so exciting to see this milestone finally achieved. All right, that's it for this update. Thank you so much for watching. We're really floored by the reaction these videos have gotten. So let us know in the comments what you like or don't like about them. We're constantly trying to up our game and do better. And don't forget, as always, be excellent to each other. We'll see you next week.